Welcome again. This is Dr. Ali Mugabel, and we're doing distribution and density of a sum of random variables. Earlier, we learned that if somebody give me a, sorry, a random variable, and I want to get, I'm giving the PDF at the input. It's going through a transformation, a system, and then I want to find what is the transformation, what's the PDF at the output. So we were after the PDF, whatever the system is. Now, because we are dealing with uh, multiple random variables, that is, we have here f of x, comma y, x, y, it becomes a bit more complicated. So we'll deal with only specific system, which is the sum of random variables. So what gets in here is x and y, and what the system is doing is summation. So we can, we can think of the following, x and y variable are going in here. And then we have the summation. We're asking, what is the PDF at the output? Okay. So basically, we're considering a simplified version where we have only one system, which is the sum of the random variables. We would like to see what's the density and what is the distribution of the random variable. Okay. We'll uh, look at the following. A random variable W is defined as W equal to X plus Y. So W is our output. X and Y are independent, to make things simple. And as I mentioned here, that statistical independence is very practical and will make things simple. So in real life, we assume that signals and communication signals and noise are independent. So if you add them together, what will be the joint PDF? So the question is, what is the PDF of Y? Not the joint. We're not looking at the joint. We're looking at a one random variable, which is a result of some of two different random variables. Fantastic. Now, we can define the CDF of W to be the probability of W is less than or equal to W. That's going from CDF to probability. Or in terms of X and Y, in terms of the green and the blue, the sum should be less than or equal to W. All right. So if we try to uh, sketch this in, um, in the plane, so if, we, if this is X and this is Y, the two axis then we this line is w and the region where x plus y is less than or equal to w is this shaded region all right and this is so this is the region that we are considering in terms of w so if you want to integrate your uh, your f of w the joint pdf for for the two uh, it, it's going to be the this region how do we define this region you have two different ways Either you say that it's going to be uh, y, if either you take all possible values of y, so it's going to be all values of y, the y goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, but then of course you have to limit your, your, your x, x should go from minus infinity up to this line. What is this line in terms of x? We just mentioned that this line is defined to be x plus y equal to w, which means that x itself, if you solve for, for x, is going to be w minus y. And this is why we are solving for this limit. That's the, the difficult part of it, finding the limit. Now, uh, somebody can do the opposite, which is perfectly correct. If somebody says, I'm going to allow x to take all possible values. So my, y li my x limit is going to be from minus infinity to plus infinity. But then x should be from, from I mean, y should be from minus infinity to this limit. So this can be infinity. Okay, you can flip the order if you like, but then the other limit should be from minus infinity up to y, which is w minus x. The, the, the point is that we have to represent the right area correctly. So we have the area that we want to represent it should be correctly represented. So now uh, we can proceed with the example. We I'm just uh, restating here that if they are independent, this will make things simple. We can separate them together. And this is why we need the independence assumption. Otherwise, it becomes not easy to solve. Once we separate them, the first integration will give you the CDF. By definition, integration from minus infinity to that variable will give you the CDF at that variable. And now we have to execute this integral. But watch for this integration. This must remind you of something. What is this? What does this look like? Just take a moment and think. What did you see this kind of integration? Yes, it reminds us of the convolution. If you differentiate both sides, you get, of course, if you, in terms of PDF, 
you get the following relation and this is nothing but the PDF the, the convolution so we are basically saying that uh, if you uh, sorry if you want to find the PDF of a sum of two random variables then it's just basically the convolution of the individual random variables we'll see some examples and that will make things simple inshallah so the density function here is a here is just to uh, highlight sorry let me just get this uh, out of our way we're saying here the density function the density function of the sum of two statistical independent random variables is the convolution of the individual density function that's the summary of the class what we have seen is just the proof now let's do an example for the density of sum of random variables we can do this graphically the question says a random variable is defined as the sum of two random variables so w is a sum x and y are independent and we want to find the bdf for the sum of the two random variables fantastic now uh, here is i'm just sketching the two pdfs for the case of x and y and you can see here that they are uniform from 0 to a and the amplitude must be 1 over a so the height times the width must give you an area equal to 1 so this goes from 0 to b and this is 1 over b so the area again equal to 1 so these are two random variables are, which are generated uh, using uniform distribution if you want the pdf of their sum then of course we're not summing the pdfs we're, we're summing the random variable so uh, the we can we just like we have seen the answer would be the convolution of these two and convolution can be done graphically or by transformation laplace for transform or by executing the uh, the convolution integration i have a video for this i will share the link with you in a second uh, where you um, where, where i explain how to find the graphical convolution so instead of repeating ourselves i'm going just to share the link with you in the comment section and i'm going to show it on the slide in a second so basically doing graphical convolution will get you something like this uh, as you can see in the following video Need, sorry we can run the following video just let me just get the right pointer so basically in graphical convolution one is going to move across the other and then you multiply you integrate so in convolution there are different operations to be done inverting shifting multiplication and then integration so this triangle which shows if the width of the two uh, squares is the same you get a triangle otherwise we'll get in our case we'll have the following shape this is zero a b a plus b and the height should be one over b the area here should equal equals to should equal to one because this is also a valid pdf now in terms of math if you do the if you want to write this explicitly in terms of expression then we have different regions here we have here zero we have zero and we have a straight line equation straight line equation and then we have a constant here so these are the four possible scenarios where the last one include in fact two so we have five different segments this is not a focus of our our, our, our um, doing the convolution is uh, just uh, happens to be the answer but we're not explaining convolution here so if if the numbers are here uniform the number here are uniform then the resultant sum will not have uniform distribution it will have the following distribution there is much less probability of being very large and being very small and then the sum will be in the middle okay i'm just giving you the link for my video and you can search mugable graphical convolution and you should you should be good to go All right, here is another example the same example i mean uh, we will the same example is done using transformation we can do laplace transformation in our case so uh, using laplace tables uh, for the unit step function this is the pdf written in terms of unit step function for the first one and the second one and this is the associated laplace transform remember that convolution laplace domain will be just multiplication so we multiply these together and then we can simplify them we work backwards and we got our um, the ram functions those ram functions if written property properly we can also do them in terms of uh, unit step function so r of omega or r, r of w would be u w u of w whatever format you want it's just to say that you get exactly the same answer 
written in a different way. So this time we did it by transformation. The previous slide was by uh, graphical convolution. Comments about um, the distribution and density of some of multiple random variables. Of course, we're dealing with independent case, which is the assumption we need to make things simple. A random variable y in blue is defined to be a sum of multiple random variables. This time we have three. We're also told that x1, x2, and x3 are all independent. So find f of y, find the PDF of y. Be careful, this is not the joint PDF. Because the joint PDF, because they are independent, it's going to be the multiplication of all. We're not dealing here with joint PDF. He wants the sum. It's just one random variable. So in that case, if you want y, it's going to be the convolution. So this is the joint that, that preserves all the information for all the three. y is just a new random variable, which is the sum of the individual uh, three samples. And that would be the convolution of the three. If you sum n random variables, you will need n minus one fold convolution. So if you have, if you sum two random variables, you need one convolution. If you sum three, you need two convolutions. So it's always n minus one fold convolution. Note that the joint PDF is different than the sum, the PDF of the sum, as we mentioned um, just here. So this is the green, and then the sum is the blue thing that you get here. It's they are totally different things. Multiply if you're looking for the joint. And the convolution is, is will give you just one variable, which is f of y for the sum. Thank you.